Hello and welcome to Cook UK. Today we're going to show you how to make gazpacho soup. That's a cold Spanish soup and it's principally tomatoes, fresh vegetables from the garden, lots of olive oil and some dried bread. This particular gazpacho is the type of gazpacho that you'd find in restaurants. It's the common, sometimes called the red gazpacho soup. Um, now there is no set recipe for this, uh, a lot will depend on what you have available in the garden and you find in Spain that one restaurant serves gazpacho soup uh, in a certain way and 200 yards down the road a different restaurant will have slightly different ingredients so but these are pretty typical so let's just go through the ingredients here First we've got a kilo of ripe tomatoes. So we've got actually two types here. We've got these plum tomatoes which are very ripe and reasonably ripe much larger tomatoes there. Beefsteak tomatoes. Any tomatoes will do as long as they're ripe. That's the key thing. The next thing we've got is two sweet peppers. You can use red, green, yellow, any colour you like. These are sweet peppers, we're not going to use chilli peppers. They never use chilli peppers in this sort of gazpacho soup recipe. We've got a cucumber that's come straight from the garden. We've got 100 grams of stalish bread here. Um, it's sort of a French loaf type bread, a Spanish loaf type of bread and it's been there for about two days so it has gone slightly stale so what else have we got we've got a garlic clove now we're only going to put one garlic clove in at this stage you might want to put in a bit a bit more maybe two garlic cloves but beware of the garlic it can overpower the soup and when you're using garlic uncooked it does have a much stronger taste so we think that one to one and a half Reasonable, reasonable sized garlic cloves is enough for this recipe. So we've got our extra virgin olive oil there. We're using Spanish olive oil. Don't skimp on that. We need good quality olive oil. And we're going to have about 150 milliliters of this olive oil put going into this soup. And here we've got a sherry vinegar. Now red or white wine vinegar will do nearly as well. This is sort of typically a top of the range type vinegar that you would put in gazpacho soup. But don't be afraid to put in red or white wine gar uh, vinegar. That will do just as well. And what we're going to do, you, you have to be careful with the vinegar as well because that can overpower the soup. <clears throat> we're going to put in two tablespoonfuls of that. And of course we've got salt here just to taste. Um, that's really up to you how much salt you want to put in because what you can do is you can make the soup with a little bit of salt in it and then taste it. If it's not got enough salt simply add more and stir in. And then on the right here we've got olives and this is for garnishing these three ingredients. We've got olives, we've got green olives and darker colour olives. We're going to chop a few of those up and use them to garnish the soup. We've got some mint which is also going to be used to garnish it and we're going to chop up some very mild spring onions and sprinkle those on the top. So that's our, our, our recipe ingredients. As far as preparation is concerned what we're going to do is skin the garlic clove, top and tail it and then finally chop it. We are going to cut these in half, remove all the pith and the seed and that stalk bit there as well and just roughly chop that up. We're also going to peel and dice the cucumber and we're not going to do anything with the tomatoes we're going to put them in to our soup it's going to go into the food processor with all the other ingredients and then at the end of it we're going to strain the soup so that we remove any pips and any large bits of skin we have at the end of the soup. Now you can, if you, if you were using large tomatoes, you can skin them before you put them in the mixture, um, which is fine. Uh, all you do is put the tomatoes, just nick them in a couple of places 
uh, put them in boiling water for 30 seconds, then plunge them into very cold water for about a minute, and you'll find the skin will peel off very easily. But because we've got these ever so ripe and delicious plum tomatoes, we're not going to peel every one of those. So we're going to put it through a sieve, as we say at the end, to remove any large bits. So we'll do that preparation and we'll get back to you when we've done that and you can see all the ingredients prepared. So our preparation is done. One thing we did forget to tell you was to soak the stale bread in water, coldish water, for about 10 to 15 minutes, which we've done there. So that's the bread soaked. Here we've finally chopped the garlic. We've cut open the peppers and chopped them into reasonable portions. We've removed all the white pith and we've removed all of the seeds. And finally what we've done is we've chopped up the, uh, well, we've skinned and chopped up the cucumber so that that will fit into the food processor. So we're just going to put that in the food processor and we'll get back to you while we're whizzing it round. So we've just started to whiz all those ingredients up in our food processor here. You, may, you probably will find that you have to do this in two batches if you're making it to the full amount of the recipe here because it simply won't fit all fit into the um, food processor. If you have to do it in two batches, what you do is do one batch, pour it into a bowl, do the next batch, pour that into the bowl and just mix it round. This is enough for, our recipe is enough for four very good portions. If you're just doing a drink, it would probably do six portions. So what we're going to do is we're going to whiz this round um, and then when it's whizzed round, we'll season it. Um, we added some salt in it and we've added our sherry vinegar but we'll have a taste of it when it's all whizzed round and, and adjust, adjust it if we need any more. So we'll just start whizzing it round now. Now we won't put you through that um, on the video but we're going to have to do that until this mixture is smooth and that's going to take us at least two minutes. So you may want to do it for two to three minutes. Take the top off, have a look. If it's smooth, then that's fine. And remember, we're going to put it through a sieve, so if you see any pips or anything like that, don't worry too much about that. So we'll come back to you when we've had this going for a couple of minutes and we'll sieve it into that bowl and we're then going to put it in the fridge. So we've whizzed the mixture around for about three minutes, two to three minutes, and that's about as smooth as our food processor is going to get it. So now what we're going to do is try and empty this into this sieve so that we can get rid of all those little lumps that still remain after the food processor has done its job. Okay. Now this won't go through by itself, so if you'll need some help, just take a wooden spoon or something like that and gently push it through. And that will take about five minutes to do that. But I promise you, you'll end up with a really smooth soup and it is a lot quicker than trying to skin all those baby plum tomatoes. So we'll get on with that, with this. And when we're finished, we'll put it in the fridge for about three hours to chill. Now, gazpacho soup, some people add ice to it, but the recipe has been around, or the basic recipe has been around for several hundred years, <coughs> and they had no refrigeration 200 years ago uh, in your normal Spanish house. So they would put it somewhere the coolest place they could possibly find, but definitely the soup wouldn't be laced with ice or anything like that. So don't try and do anything other than put it in your fridge for, as we say, about three hours and then you'll get something resembling an authentic gazpacho cold soup. So we'll come back to you when this soup has been chilled and we'll decorate it and show you what the final product looks like.
Your gazpacho soup has been chilled in the fridge for two to three hours and it's ready to eat now. All we've done is simply garnish it with a few mint leaves, some finely sliced spring onions and a few bits of olives. Alternatively you can leave it unadorned and just serve up some side bowls with some olives, some spring onions, some cubes of ham and maybe even do what the Spaniards do is make some hard boiled eggs and just chop them up and serve them as an accompaniment in a bowl. The final addition to the whole thing would be a crusty loaf. Remember you can see this recipe also at www.cookuk.co.uk where we have other gazpacho recipes as well as this one and lots of hints and tips on how to cook different types of gazpacho soup.